And we do continue our coverage this week of looking back at 20 years since the war in Iraq began. Seven years of combat cost America 4,400 of our own soldiers. In Iraq, the casualties were in the tens of thousands. But the bitterness over the war would linger for years, creating a legacy of hate against the U.S. In the northern Iraqi city of Mosul, which was under the control of the Islamist radical group ISIS until 2017, city leaders felt there was a need for education for children to reverse those years of ISIS influence, control, and hate toward the West. Enter Hardwired Global, a nonprofit organization that specializes in educational programs that overcome intolerance and hate. Hardwired Global was founded by Tina Ramirez, and Tina joins us now uh, live from Iraq. Tina, thank you so much uh, for being here with us today. Really appreciate you coming on. When Hardwired Global began in Iraq, what were the lives of children like? What was school like for them? What did you um, come into when you first started? Yeah, thank you for having me. We actually began right after the genocide began in 2014, and we quickly saw that children were some of the worst victims of ISIS. They didn't know how to process the trauma that they had seen. I mean, many of them had seen their families been killed, were forced to flee their homes without anything. Um, many of them, you know, their, their parents were killed in the midst of that. And so when they arrived in uh, Kurdistan for safety, we began working the refugee camps and displacement camps there. But we began also preparing teachers so that when, when Mosul was liberated, we were able to go back in with those educators and work with the new government in Mosul and the Nineveh Plains, the Directorate of Education. And they gave us formal approval because of the success of our work outside of the camps, um, outside of the area in the camps, to begin working in schools across the region to train teachers in pluralism and freedom of religion and belief and how to help these children really overcome all the trauma that they, that they had seen to begin to really value the religious other. And it, when ISIS had been there, they had really indoctrinated these children with such hate and fear of one another that the kids didn't know how to process that. Many of the children that were returning had been victims of ISIS. And many of the children that were living there were hiding in their homes the entire time that ISIS was there and had been out of school for several years, um, just living in fear, seeing dead bodies in the streets and seeing the kind of persecution that was taking place under this oppressive uh, regime. And so it was a really important opportunity for us to work with these children so that they wouldn't be the next generation of ISIS or the next victims of ISIS. And this sounds like a very large task, task to take charge of, um, but something that is equally important to deal with. So turning back radical Islam is a challenge, uh, especially with young children. So what made you think that your organization would be able to do that? And do you find that it has been successful? Mm -hmm. Well, we've had a track record of this, uh, not just in Iraq, but in several countries. Uh, and a few years ago, the King of Morocco actually hosted us with leaders from across the region to display the importance of these efforts and what had been done and the success of it in order to help other regional leaders uh, see it as a model that they could adopt. And so now the government of Lebanon and the government of Kosovo have adopted it, and several other countries in the region are looking at it. Um, the Kurdish government and the KRG is also looking at having us train all of their religious studies teachers here. So um, what we've seen in the children that have gone through our training programs, both here and in other countries, is that become they become more resilient against extremism, that they become more respectful of the equal rights of women and girls, um, that they are able to actively defend people that believe differently and including women and girls, and that um, they really are able to actively engage with people that are different and then eschew or mitigate violence in their communities. And I think most importantly was something that I heard this week what, since I've been in Mosul, which is that one of the parents said to us that one of the most important things that they've seen is in the children that have gone through this program, that they're able to come home and influence their parents in these ideas of tolerance and pluralism and freedom of conscience and belief that and human dignity that they're learning. And so I think it's really encouraging to see the impact. You, you know, once you see it on the ground, there's no denying what's happening. And I think that's why not only is the work expanding here across Iraq, but also in other countries. Because for so long, they didn't have a model for what could work, for what could help these children not only process their trauma, but replace their fears with new ideas of the value and the dignity of others to live in peace together again. Um, we've we've heard so many stories. I mean, one in particular was a, a teacher that 
was hiding. It was a Muslim um, student that when he was 14 years old, ISIS had come in and he hid in his home for three years and would go out every once in a while to get food for his family. And he would have to walk over dead bodies to get it. And the scars are still in his mind of what he saw. Um, when ISIS was defeated, another Christian teacher, uh, Christian moved back in and he was then, then became a teacher. And through the lessons that we've been, the training that we've been doing, he's been working with that Christian teacher, Muslim and Christian, to help the students learn how to live together in peace and overcome their fear. So it's a really powerful tool that we're seeing uh, really change the society here. And that's why the government has been so supportive. And and like I said, it's spreading everywhere. Yeah. Well, thank you for what you're doing. Tina Ramirez, I uh, appreciate you coming on today. Thank you for having us. Rob.